All right, everybody. Um, I want to talk about programming your robot using the motor encoder. And I also want to get a little fancy and uh, do some functions and some other things um, to help improve your code. Uh, I just want to point out a couple things. I've got my EV3, and I'm using the Robot C standard. And so first thing you always want to do is you want to power it on. And uh, so we're going to test it out, but uh, I've configured some motors, and I put this uh, little thing on here so you can sort of see rotations because our goal to begin with is to try to get this thing to rotate exactly 360 degrees one complete rotation and try to get it as consistent as we can and then we want to we're going to have another one that we're going to use the same and we're going to see if using two motors we can get them consistent as well so we'll do those two and we're going to write the standard code using motor encoders but we got to set everything up so you want to pay attention to how you set up your robot. I've got motors in A and D, and A is supposed to be my right-hand motor, but it depends on how you build the robot, so you can swap that around. Just know my goal is A is to be right, B is to be left, and it's the right we're going to start with. So let's go ahead. First thing I always do in my code is I go to the motors and sensor setup. And so uh, I want to go to motors, motor A, uh, one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to give it a name. Let's call it motor right. And then on drive motor side, I'm going to set it to right. And then on D, we'll just call it motor left. The important part is that you set it over here. This only seems to work if you give a name here. If you don't give a name, it doesn't let you do it. If you decide that the left needs to be reversed or the right needs to be reversed, you reverse it by checking the box here. Notice we're using the EV3 motor large. So you want to make sure those are set up. And then later on if you want to do sensors you can set those up. That's not my concern on this particular program. You'll notice immediately these pragma lines are added. I did not hand type those out. They just appeared when I did motor and sensor setup. So here's our task main. Now a couple things that we need to do is we need to start by looking at our motor encoder. Now motor encoder tracks the angle of rotation on your motor and it counts it as integers one at a time. So um, the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to calibrate it. You're going to want to basically reset it because it usually just keeps adding up um, indefinitely and then eventually we need to, it just goes rolls back over to zero we need to start with wherever we're going to begin, we're going to call that zero so that we start from zero. It's a great way to start. So let's go ahead and set that. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to task main and we're going to, I'll put a little comment here, uh, reset motor encoders zero. And that is through n motor. Now look at this, we got this little, little code hints here. Uh, I'm going to use the second one down, end motor encoder. I click it, I hit a bracket. Now notice we got motor A, motor D. Ah, so it's not giving me right and left. Let me try changing this to just right and left and see if that helps anything on here. I had it working earlier. Well, it's not showing me that. Let me check one last thing on here. Well, okay, that's fine. We'll just make this motor A equals zero. Now I could just work on uh, just the motor A's and motor encoder, and I could work on it. One of the things that we're going to want to do is we are going to want to, uh, once we have it set to zero, we're going to try to rotate 360 degrees. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to create basically a while loop that uh, is going to loop. And um, while it's looping, it's going to keep adding. The motor encoder is going to keep going. So I'm going to write while. And then in brackets here, we're going to put um, n motor encoder. Put a bracket here. Oh, I think I know what's going to happen in just a moment. Motor A, while that is less than 360. 
So what we're trying to do here is we're saying as long as the end motor encoder has not reached 360 degrees, we're going to power motor A. So motor, motor A. Then we're going to give it 50% power just to see what happens there. While it's less than 360, power it at 50%. And then let's just do a quick wait. I like I tend to like to do wait maybe about a hundred milliseconds or so. We'll see how that works. Okay, at this point I think I'm ready to compile, see to make sure everything's working okay. We want to just give it a um, and motor encoder sample, we'll call it. Uh, I didn't see any X's, so it seems to like it. So we're gonna try to download that to the robot and test it out. Okay, I'm going to hold this. I just want to point where it's, take a look at where it's pointing at, and let's see after we run it. Does it work? It does, but did you notice it over rotated? Went a little too far. Okay, let's go back. Uh, let's see if changing the speed affects it any. Still going over. And if I just keep running it, it just goes a lot over. Okay, so that's not doing too well. Let's power this down to 30. Try it again. Sometimes you want to just test it out a few times. Yeah, it's still over rotating. All right, let's change it down to 20% power. I just want to see if we can get to the point I forgot to look at where it started. Let's try that again. Okay, let's try changing the wait time as well. And it's still over rotating a little bit, as you can see. Now, of course, part of the thing is these motors are a little finicky and um, so we do have an issue with that um, I would like to be able to just treat that 360 and know that it's gonna work um, but notice when we went down in power it became a little closer I'm gonna try to see if what if we actually put two different motor encoders and try to split the difference between both motors let's see if we can get better results on that okay uh, in the meantime I went ahead and added one of those uh, little white indicators on here as well. We'll move this forward a little bit. The other thing now we're going to have to find out is, are these motors going to be set up right or not. Um, so one of the things I want to kind of do is realize if these two motors were mounted, this would need to be on the other side. So we're going to pull it around to the other side. And we want to make sure that these wheels are rotating in the same amount or we need to change them. So we're going to do that first. Basically, I want to do the same thing for my motor encoder for motor B, or motor D, excuse me. Before I do that, there we go. Guess what? I've got left and I've got right back now, and I realize I had not compiled the program. Once you compile it, then any variable names you give it actually work. <laughs> Now what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and power this motor. And we'll change motor A here to right again. So now it's a little bit easier to read in our code what motor is supposed to be doing what. So let's go ahead and compile it. No errors there. Let's download to the program. And now I want to first of all check to see are my wheels rotating in the same configuration? Will it go forward, backward, or go in reverse? Let's see if we can get them basically connected here. Try running it again. Yeah, they're going in the same direction. So we're good as far as how we have it set up. So now I've got both of these motors, each with their own indicator. So now what I want to do 
is go ahead and uh, find a way I can get these things mounted so you can see them going together and see the relationship of the two. Because what I'm thinking is if they each have their own motor encoder, what we can do is we can make both of them work together and the first one to get to 360 stops it so that one might catch it before the other in case one of these motors is a little better. So I'll show you how we do that in the code. Okay, I did a little weird configuration to be able to connect these two motors together so we can sort of see how things are going. I want to make sure they're kind of pointing so when you see it, it looks like they're pointing in the same direction. Now, this is very informal, not very scientific, but we'll try it anyway. Uh, first thing you notice when I go to run it, they're going the opposite directions because I swapped the one around. So just for the sake of this particular one here, I am going to reverse the left motor, click OK, and then run it again so you can see that they're now going in the same direction. All right, so now we can sort of detect and see if they're performing any better. One of the things we can do is to mess around with speed since we're applying it to two different motors, but we want it to be the same power. Um, we're going to create a variable to do that. It's going to be an integer because it's a whole number. And we'll put int speed equals 20, like so. And then we'll change this to speed here and here, run it again, test it out, okay, it's applying the variable now, and then if we want to test it at 30, we change it just on this one line, and now the rest of it sort of matches. So now they're faster. Okay, so we got two motors going, we got a speed, let's bring it all the way up to 50. Hopefully this thing won't tear it apart. Okay, already they look fairly synced. I think we're pretty good on that one here. And so what we want to do is instead of just checking one motor encoder, we're going to say we want basically as long as we, we want it so either the right or the left can trigger a stop. So what we're going to have to say is we're going to loop while both of these are less than 360. So as soon as one of them goes above 360, it stops it. For that, we need the double ampersand, which means both what's on the left and what's going to be on the right need to be true. I'm just going to copy this because it's a lot easier to copy and paste and change that to left. Let me zoom out, or not zoom out, but let me pull this out a little bit here. I did not intend to do while, so hold on a second. That's what I intended to do. So saying while the right motor is less than motor encoder is less than 360, and the left motor encoder is less than 360, let's go ahead and run it. Download the robot. They're both pointing pretty much in the same direction. You might want to mark where this is or where that one is. This, you see it pointing right about there. Let's go ahead and run it. And it, notice how it went beyond. Fortunately, they're both stopping at about the same. They're staying in sync for the most part. So that's really good. And so it shows that the speed 50 is just probably too much. Try it at 40. A little bit better. Let's try it a few times. As you tell, we're over rotating on some cases and not always in others. So, all right, let's just go ahead. So, one of the things you're going to need to do is probably uh, to get one full rotation, you might need to scale back this number and maybe 360 is too much if you want it to go that fast. We'll go, go back to 30. We'll just keep going until we think we've got a good number that doesn't over rotate. Yeah, and we're still over rotating. Try it at 20. And it's still over rotating. Even at 20. But you'll notice it's not quite as exaggerated. Could try five milliseconds. Mm -hmm. 
and it's already still over rotating. Okay. And you'll notice they're now a little bit off sync, so one is less than the other. So none of this is too terribly precise. So one of the things you're going to have to do is experiment with the speed and maybe this number as well. Maybe we try it at 350 or 355. So I'll let you figure that out. In my next video tutorial, what I'll do is I'll show you how we can take some of these concepts here and write a function that will let us be a little more precise in how far we travel. Stay tuned for that.